Hello, welcome to lesson four of the shooter game set of lessons. Um, we've been doing our zombie game for the last three lessons, but we're going to change it slightly today because I want to go back and re-practice some skills, but with a different project. Um, on the screen at the moment, you're going to see a sort of a spaceship shooter game um, with more, with more movement. Um, this is what we're going to try and uh, emulate in our next project. Our first step will be to create the art of the um, spaceship. I, I imagine I'm not a particularly good artist, it's going to take too long, we don't want to spend too long on this today, I'm just creating the art for the spaceship, so I'm going to get an image off the internet and I'm going to do something to it so that we can take it into Scratch more easily. Um, if you don't have Windows 10, you may not be able to do this because you um, may not have the right tool, to, or you may, you, I mean you could do it, but not in a way that I'm going to be able to explain in this video. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get something, so I'm going to write in I'm going to go to Google, write in Spaceship Plan View. Plan View up here. A plan view is a top-down, means top-down view of a spaceship. So go to Images, find one that you're you're happy with. Now this isn't, if I was if I was taking one of these images to try and use it in a, in a piece of work where I was going to try and make money off it, this would be illegal. So you can't, you can't just take images of the internet and try and make money. But because we're just doing it for educational purposes, it's not too big a deal. So um, I might use this, uh, I might use this X-Wing here from from uh, Star Wars. Now I can't just take this straight into um, into Scratch and hope it's going to work because if I save this image on my desktop, okay. So if we just try and save an image, sometimes when it has these um, checks on the background, it means that this part of the image is going to be transparent, and sometimes that works depending on what access you have to the image. It's quite complicated, but basically, I've saved this X-wing onto my um, desktop. I've also saved this spaceship here onto my desktop. I then loaded, I'm not going to go through this now, but I quickly loaded them into um, a Scratch in, a scratch project. And as you can see, the X-Wing came in out with a transparent background. And the other spaceship didn't have a transparent background. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get a transparent background very quickly in case the image you want doesn't come in with a transparent background. Now, if you, if you don't have Windows 10, you, you may just have to make your own sprite by just painting it. Um, I'm not a very good artist, but you could go ahead and try and paint your own kind of basic spaceship. The, this is not an art lesson, so I won't worry too much, but this is uh, what I want to show you first is how to get an image in, uh, to be transparent. So <clears throat> when you're on the internet, find an image you like, right click it, and you can press copy or say, let's press copy. And then go to your search bar and type in um, paint. 3D. You need the 3D version of it. That's what um, Windows 10 will have. If you've got Windows 10, you want to create a new, and then you're going to right-click and paste your image like this. Brushes. Make sure brushes is selected. Then get Magic Select. Bring in the edges like this, so you've just got the main image. And press Next here. Press Done. And what it does is it just it it automatically uses artificial intelligence basically to f to figure out which bit of the image you want and which bit you don't want. So if I bring this over, just drag it outside for now, and then select select all of this, right click, press delete, and bring oops, bring the spaceship. Ugh, there we go. Bring the spaceship back in. Now if we go to menu, save as image. And very importantly, we want transparency because transparency is what makes the background see-through and not white. Uh, and you make sure it's PNG image here, press save. Save it to a location, so space, spaceship three. And then if I go into my scratch project, if I now upload a new sprite, Spaceship 3, it there comes in now, it's transparent, it's no longer got the white background. Right, so I'm gonna start fresh so we're with a new project so that it's le uh, less confusing. So go to new and, and delete the cat. I'm going to upload my spaceship. Uh, it's too big for purposes of what we're going to do. We're going to go left to right, by the way, on our game, because because of the way the screen is on a, in um, 
scratch. It's, it's basically landscape. So it makes more sense if we go left to right rather than um, up down. So I'm going to go into costumes. And what you'll first of all you'll see is well, yours may come up like this with the button here that says convert to vector. Press convert to vector. And what that does is it, it changes the image. You know, it's a way it's more complicated than I want to explain at the moment, but basically changes how the image is stored, which means you can do more with it if it's like this. Now what we need to do is to oops, no, I don't want to do that. Um, we want to select it and we want to make sure that it is centered on that center spot so that any movements are, are um symmetrical basically so make sure it's just choose a point along the center it doesn't matter if you go there for the tip of the spaceship or there now basically i'm going to have some guns some guns coming out of this some uh, bullets so i want to kind of line it up i think with where the bullets are going to come out of so that might make it a bit easier actually no i think i'm just going to go here with this white this spot here okay so that's now centered on on that spot there okay now the size is um is clearly too big we'll, we'll we, let's just play around with the size to start with i'm going to try 50. uh i think i might need to be a little bit smaller than that let's go with 40. So this is percent compared to the original so it's it's 40 percent Okay, in other lessons we can think about you know a, a space background, but I'm just going to book, concentrate on the basics today. So our first most obvious thing we want to deal with is movement movement of the spaceship. So um, let us go to the code for the spaceship, and we're going to go to uh, first of all let's get started with a, a when clicked, and we want if you remember a forever loop to check for our keyboard presses to start with so forever and then we're going to so if i didn't have the forever loop it would only look at the code one time at the very start of of the of the green um, flag press but we want it to be checking forever so we want to forever check um and what do we want we want so we want for, uh, which is an if statement forever if the up arrow is pressed we're going to want the spaceship to move up the screen now you may want to use the up arrows or you may want to use the WASD keys on the keyboard I actually prefer WASD for my left hand so I'm going to not press up I'm actually going to press W for it. there you go WASD so when, it, when I press W I want the spaceship to move up so I'm going to go to um, motion so when I press the W key I don't want him just to move because what he'll do if, if he moves let me show you if I just have that and I press the W key so I want him to go up he just he moves forward and that's not what I want I don't want him to move forward I want him to move um, up the screen so I'll take out that 10 steps but now up and down on a an axis is um, the Y axis so we can change the Y axis by uh, let's try five so there we go. Now when I press W, he's moving up. I want to do the reverse of that, so I'm going to duplicate it. I say when I'm pressing the, the S key, which would be down, you can press the down arrow if you prefer. So the, when I press the S key, I want to change his Y direction by minus five. Now this spaceship is not going to have a direct, he's not going to have be point, he's only ever going to be pointing in one direction, which is um, to the right. But there you go, I'm pressing W, S, now I want to do the left and right controls as well, so duplicate. So A would be is going to be left for me, and I don't want to change Y direction because left and right would be X direction. So I'm going to have X. If I'm pressing A, I want it to go left, so that's minus number, so minus five. And let's duplicate this. When I press D, I want him to go to the right, so it's going to be five. So now I've got full motion around the screen for my spaceship. Okay, so we're going to have the gun on the left and the right hand side of the spaceship. So that when I press the spacebar key, it shoots one from the left. And then the next time I press the spacebar key, it will shoot from one from the right. Um, and so we're going to try and create that kind of situation. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I need to create a variable that knows if, if the um, side it last shot from was left or right. So I'm going to go to variables 
make a variable and call it side. Now, what I want to do is variables can only take um, numbers in um, in scratch. They can't take letters. I don't think they can. So we're going to have to have one number meaning left and one number meaning right. So we're going to start the game and we're going to set the side to one. And one can be, uh, let's say, right hand side. Okay. So that make, might make sense in a minute, but basically it's this is saying the side that we want to start shooting from is side one, which is going to be the right hand side. Then we're going to make another control here, so duplicate this, and say when the space bar is clicked, we're going to shoot, I'm going to get rid of that, we're going to sh uh, create a clone of a bullet. We haven't created a bullet yet, or a gun or rocket, whatever you want to call it, so we'll do that now. So let's paint a sprite. You can be as creative with this as you want, I'm just going to keep this simple for now because we don't want this lesson to go on for too long. So from the center point, Let's have, oh now I need to, do the start. need to set the thickness and the color before you draw it, I think. So let's go for, let's go for the green color. Okay, that should do, we don't want anything too complicated. So uh, this sprite is going to be called our sh uh, shot. Well, no, let's call it. Let's call it bullet, just for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to make sure I press on spaceship, and when I press the space key, we're going to create a clone of the bullet. So go to um, control. No, sorry, events, and then no, sorry, it is control. Create a clone of bullet. Okay, so we won't do anything yet. Um, let's go to bullet and put some code in there. So we need to get the events. When I start as a clone, first thing we want it to do is to, well let's just check it's actually working first of all, so let's go to looks and go uh, show, so let's see if we can actually get that to work, do something okay so I'm just wondering why my bullet isn't working and I can see why, I've stupidly I've put in my if statement for the spacebar key inside the D key which means it would only trigger the um, space key. If it was, if the D key was also being pressed at the same time, it's almost impossible to make that work. So we're gonna, we have to make sure it's in the right position. Make sure it's under the if, not inside it. So hopefully that will work now. Let's try that again. So when I press the space key, create clone of bullet, and see what happens. Okay, so I was having some issues there with my bullet when I was pressing. So I, thought, I was looking at my code, thinking I've done this right. When I press space bar create a clone of bullet um, and go to the bullet when I, when it starts as a clone show it at zero zero now we don't really need this um, why I was thinking why isn't this working because I could I could tell that it was right but the reason it's not working is quite complicated basically if I click bullet there it's showing there is a bullet on the screen but why is it not there it's complicated but basically in a graphic software I forgot this it doesn't it can't show a line line doesn't technically have any thickness. A line is, is the distance between two points basically, or two points connected, but it doesn't have any thickness that you can see. So doing a line isn't actually going to show anything. So what we're going to need to do, I think this is correct. Oops, undo, undo. I think what we're going to need to do is instead of having a line as our bullet, let's just delete the bullet, let's just delete that. It's going to work better if we have a very, very thin rectangle which to you may not seem like there's much difference but there there is let's fill it with green so that will hopefully now work it's going to be a little bit too long I'm going to make that size a bit smaller so it's not too big oops that make it smaller here I should say
Okay, so now when I press spacebar, it should appear in the way we want it to. Okay, I haven't given it any other code other than other than that at the moment. So, and then we're going to say right, when when I start as a clone, show go to a position. We'll make a positional change in a minute, but I just wanted to demonstrate it moving. And then we're going to tell it to move. So, we're going to say forever. Uh, it needs to move. Move ten steps. Now the direction for this should be um, shouldn't need too much more altering than that. Let's see if this works. Yes. So that's as we want it. It's not firing from the right place, but um, it is doing what we've told it to do. Okay. So next is what we want it to do is to be able to cut start from the the um, spaceship itself so let's just separate this out here and instead of go to zero zero we're going to want it to go to the spaceship so let's say go to spaceship let's get rid of that and see what happens okay so that's fine it's coming out the middle which is okay it's not what we want we want it to come out of the wings. So I'm going to tell it to go to the spaceship. So it's it's in the right position, but then I want it to come and come out of here. So by saying go to spaceship, we've got it to shoot out of the middle of the spaceship, but we want it to actually be slightly higher up on the wing, so it's coming out of here. So I'm going to change the y direction. So let's take this, put that there. Before it actually starts moving, let's change its y direction up a bit and see how that works. So that's gone up a bit. But not quite enough because I want it to come out of here. So I'm going to change it to let's say 14. See if that works. Not quite. Let's go with 17. Try that. 19. That seems right to me. But it's coming out slightly too far, far out. I want it to go right, touching right back on the wing there. So let's change that x direction or check x position by let's say. Um, minus five and see how that works. So it's going to move backwards along the x direction. Still a bit too far. I'm going to change it to minus 10. There we go. That seems okay to me. Okay, so now all this complicated bit is how are we going to get how are we going to get it to come out of the left and right side each time I press it? Now that's something to do with this number here. So we're going to use something clever here based on the symmetry that we've made with our um, made with our uh, picture and we're going to use the idea of timesing by minus one because when we change the y direction here when it was at zero um, when it was at zero came out the middle of the so again it comes out the middle of the ship when it's at 19 it comes out there so conversely we should expect if we put in minus 19 it comes out exactly the same position but underneath now, how are we going to make the computer alternate between left and right? Well, we're going to use something clever. We're going to try and we're going to um, multiply the number by uh, minus one each time. Well, no, sorry, let me say that again. We're going to multiply. We're going to use 19, but we're going to multiply it by what side it's on. And the side is going to change from one to minus one, one to minus one. So. What I'm going to do here, so this is a little bit complicated, but you'll, you'll, when you see it working, you hopefully you'll understand what I mean. First of all, I'm going to go back to the spaceship code. Okay, so after I've pressed the spacebar key, I want the side to change from one to minus one. And if it's minus one, I want to change it back to one. Going to be a little bit complicated. I'm going to use this set value here, this set block here. So I'm going to, after I've created the clone, we could do it before, it makes no, no difference. After I've created the clone, I want to set my side value to, now what do we set it to? We don't know. Sometimes we're going to want it to be 1, sometimes we're going to want it to be minus 1 depending on what it was last time. Now we can use some clever maths here to use it to do a calculation. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this multiply, this little star here is a multiply. So we're going to take what it was previously, so take what it was. Oops, that's, let me uh, 
undo that. I've made a mistake there. Let's do it outside. So we're going to take what it was and we're going to multiply it by minus one. Now let me explain how that works. Right, so let me give you a little explanation about um, what this multiplying by minus one does. If the side variable is starting on one, but we take one and we multiply it by minus one. So if I take one, let's just do it, let's just do it like this. If I take one and I multiply by minus one, one multiplied by minus one is minus one. So if it started that calculation as one, if the numbers, if the side number started as one, if we multiply it by minus one, we end up with minus one. So it's, the side number is now set to minus one. If we now take that, if we now start the next time we press space bar, it's going to take that number there, so that minus one, it's going to it's starting with minus one this time. If we do minus one times minus one, hopefully you know from, from mathematics that minus one times minus one is one. Okay, so it will follow that pattern forever. Now if I just set this up, um, if I just set this spreadsheet up and say, right, take whatever the number it finished on last time was, put it there, and then for this box, take whatever it was there, but multiply it by minus one, just drag that down, it will just continually alternate between one minus one, one minus one, purely by multiplying by minus one, it will change a number from negative to positive, positive to negative, negative positive, positive to negative. It's a really clever way of switching between a negative and a positive number, it's just by multiplying by minus one. Okay, so when we put that in here, every time I press, we won't do anything to the lasers yet because I've not changed it, but watch the side value here. As I, every time I press it, it will change from, I need to put a little buffer in there because it's not allowing me to, uh, every one click of the, it's, it's sensing one click of my keyboard as two, ki as two clicks. So I'm going to pop a little weight thing in here. Let's get rid of that, that shouldn't be there. Pop a little weight in here of 0 0.05, and that way it'll allow the computer enough time to realize that when I press the space bar key, I'm only pressing it once. So you'll be able to see there, as I press space bar, side changes from one to minus one. It's still in the center of the the, uh, the spaceship because I've not done anything yet, but it's changing from one to minus one. Now we can use that if we go into clone, and here where I said change Y, now, I want to change the y. It's always going to be 19 multiplied by what my side is. So if it's 19 multiplied by 1, it's going to be 19. If it's 19 multiplied by minus 1, it'll be minus 19. So we'll do 19 multiplied by the side that we want. So left or right, 1 minus 1. And let's see what that does. So bottom, top, bottom, top. There we go. Now that's happening because every time I press the space bar, it changes the side from one to minus one. And then we change, we use that to multiply 19 by. So we're either going to get 19 or minus 19, depending on which way we do it. And we can combine that with our movements around to get our moving spaceship. Right, one final thing I want to say is that every time we create a bullet, um, the computer has to keep track of all these bullets I'm creating. And once they've gone off the screen, we don't really need them anymore. So we should delete them, otherwise we're using up computer power. And you can kind of see them actually, they're just at the edge there. So when it touches the edge of the screen, we want a bullet to delete itself. Um, so we are going to say if, so we need to put this inside the forever loop, if I'm touching the edge, so let's say touching the edge, then we want to delete this clone so that we don't have, a, we don't have thousands of uh, bullets stuck to the side of the screen. So there you go, if you can, that should be better now. I've also, um, I've taken, because it was a bit um, laggy, I've taken out the, taken down 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.05 to 0 0.01. It's still not smooth, but um, 
it works for now. Now your challenge today is to see, can you now create an alien that comes from the right hand side of the screen to, don't worry about shooting today, but can you make an alien that approaches the um, spaceship and then try and delete it. So we've got all the skills we need from when we did the zombies, but can you now try and do it yourself? Good luck.